Welcome to an in-depth report here on Sports Scene, where we take a look into the world of China sports and give you a glimpse into where that world is going. I'm Lionel Donovan, and in this series, I'll take you to some of the most remote, remote places in the most country. prestigious. Right now, we're in the trophy room of the show. And most luxurious football institutions. I'm standing in front of one of the largest. And talk to school administrators, government officials, coaches, and young football players themselves to get the untold story of China's youth football. <laughs> this is Sports Team, and this is before the kickoff. Sports scene continues with a special look at football around China. We have a devoted series that looks on the development of the sport in China, and today we bring you the second episode. Today's installment begins in the mountains. Increasing the number of football players in any country is no easy task, but the first step to that is building a strong and healthy community. In order to find out how China plans on building its football community, we've come to one of the most remote places in the country, the city of Lijiang, located in the Yunnan province, underneath the Jade Dragon Snowy Mountains. Here, the football community is extremely strong, especially among the Nashi minority residents. From Thomas who can barely walk to elderly villagers, Everybody is very enthusiastic about football. Why do you think football is so popular here in Lijiang? In our grandparents' generation, they were very excited about football. For example, when we were kids, our grandparents would come to school to cheer us on when we were playing football. And now it's the same. They know the basic rules for the sports, like fouls or offsides. Parents not only know the rules, most of them are pretty good players. Ah, I'm getting old. Well, in order for football to be more popular here in China, it's important for kids to get out, have fun, and play the game. But unlike other schools, the intensive training that goes on here gives off the impression that football is more than just about having a good time. Some of our kids were chosen by professional clubs and afterwards many kids want to compete and most of them have dreams to make it to the national team and go on to win glory for our country. They don't feel tired during training when they have that motivation. Our students will is very strong. When they fall down, they don't cry and don't say if they are hurt. They stand up immediately. So their spirit is kind of the same as the player aboard, which is why the professional clubs like to choose from our players. Although there is a rich football culture in Yunnan, there are also difficulties. The difficulty in many of our schools in nearby village or towns don't have a football pitch, so the students don't have a place to train. Our football foundation is very poor. Many of the kids don't like football because they don't know anything about the game, and they also can't play the game because they don't have anywhere to play. After Germany lost in the 2000 European Cup, they set up 366 youth football areas distributed all over the country, and that has allowed about 15,000 young players to have access to professional level training. So in my opinion, it doesn't matter if kids naturally gravitate towards football, or we cultivate talent when we see it in a kid, and they go on to have a professional career. Having enough football pitches available should be the key issue. 
Meanwhile, in addition to not having anywhere to play, the lack of capital is another obstacle that limits the development of youth football training. Training young people needs a large amount of investment, but it hardly gets any feedback, sometimes zero feedback. This is why the systems used to train young players are struggling in China. According to Lu Nong Football's vice principal, the cost of raising a child is 100,000 renminbi. If a kid spends 10 years there, that adds up to 1 million. Assuming that there's a 10% success rate for the school, in theory, it takes about 10 million renminbi to prepare one child for the professional leagues. But with the resurgence of football popularity, maybe there will be more investment flowing into the sport. But will that solve the problem? A huge amount of money flowing into the football sector with absolutely no coordination or understanding of where it should go or how it should be used uh, to build sustainable activities. Will we have a constructive system and a sustainable system uh, that makes football fun for millions of kids, that leads into a pyramid and we create a healthy, a healthy pyramid for Chinese football? I have to say, based on previous experiments, I am not optimistic uh, that this money and this energy will be used in the right way. I am quite worried that it will be used in the wrong way and um, some people will get rich on the back of uh, the football's popularity but if it will really result in more kids enjoying the game and able to take part in quality competitions and tournaments um, I think the jury is certainly out and I would have my doubts. Better policies and increased investment certainly helps, but the thing that makes the youth football culture blossom here is its unique and rich environment. So the question becomes, can China take this environment and apply it to the country at large, or will they have to start from scratch? First, we should encourage our kids to go to the playground and make sure they have one hour for sports every day. If every kid could do one hour a day, three days per week, the rest of the days could be used for other sports. Then the football, basketball, volleyball and table tennis communities would be huge, because we have a lot of young people in the country. We have 200 million children. If 10% of them played football, that would be 20 million. If we had that many people playing sports, it would be easy to improve our results. In Argentina, everybody feels the passion for football, so we love to play football. Whenever we are with friends, uh, there is always a ball, a football ball. Uh, so we start playing for fun, for among friends. And so I would say that everybody in Argentina plays football. There is a huge difference. People abroad treat football as a way of life, a way of happiness. As a career, a kid can grow up happily in. That's how they see the sport of football. Schools and parents should be more open to the sport of football. They should fully support their children who want to play, and then there would be more children who would like to participate in the sport. The aim of playing football is not to become a football star or a champion. It should be for building a healthy body and modelling a person's temperament. That's the ultimate goal of football. Only when we change our way of thinking to this, we can really popularise football amongst the youth. A strong football population is a basic need in developing the football community in China. But things won't work without choosing real talent properly and grooming them for a professional career. In the next episode, we'll take a look at how talented kids should be picked.